All right, I want to highlight another uh, kind of new feature that we've incorporated um, <clears throat> into our portal application with version uh, version four, uh, and this is on the service portal side. And, and really, the the reason for this is we had a couple customers that um, uh, they had catalog items with UI macros or with other kind of client script components that weren't service portal compatible. And um, rather than re-engineer all the catalog items to be compatible with the service portal, they kind of wanted to leave some of those other items kind of um, in kind of a legacy view mode or uh, kind of a classic view mode to be able to still interact with those items um, from the portal or the new service portal, um, but without having to re-engineer them to make them service portal compatible. So what we did, just to kind of highlight that, let me um, uh, first of all I'll show you kind of behind the scenes here in terms of defining or flagging which items uh, belong in that. There is a field that's part of our application that's called render in legacy view. If you set to true then it'll kind of apply that to this item. So this item I've got this Apple iPad item it doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to make it really uh, legacy view or, or not to make it where it wouldn't work in the service portal, but just for example purposes, I flagged this one as being kind of render and legacy view. Um, and one thing to note, just to highlight, um, one of the other updates we have in our application is the use of server storage to speed up things. So this is a an attribute that um, if you flag it, you may need to go into uh, basically to the kind of background schedules and rebuild the server storage cache to see an immediate result, or this is something that kind of runs on a nightly basis. So just to be aware of that. Um, the other thing just to highlight kind of where this is coded is in the card object definition you'll see in the processing script section of this you'll see code kind of near the bottom that basically says if it's flagged for render and legacy view equals to true then set this behavior to uh, pop up window and I set this URL to legacy uh, UR view URL uh, if it's an order guide it has a kind of different URL here now what behavior you get now is so when I go to shop so I go to the request area here, and this is going to be uh, kind of all over the or wherever I interact with this. So just to highlight, so if I go to something that's not one of these legacy view items like the Apple iPad, iPhone uh, item here, this is still part of the service portal. This is uh, you know kind of the screen I get as a modal pop up. You'll see kind of the headers here, options, the inputs for the field, submit, add to cart. And I want to just visually note that that's kind of what it looks like. Very very. Um, and then if I got the one that's a legacy view, if I click on this, it's opening a little differently. You kind of see I've got my window properties. As you can see, it's the legacy view. But the layout, the look is very similar. So the idea here is to not make it too jarring that I'm loading something differently. But what's actually happening kind of behind the curtains here is I'm actually getting outside of the service portal kind of context and I'm rendering the catalog item kind of more like a legacy CMS component which then allows it to have support for uh, UI macros, for the um, kind of client scripts that are flagged for desktop only, um, as well as maybe some of the look and feel of things like the list collectors. So you know it's kind of an exception <clears throat> to the rule kind of process but uh, gives you some options here. Now one of the things that we've done with this as well as it says a pop-up window but there's some handling of events coming back so if I do add to cart for example you'll see that kind of comes back closes the window comes back and <clears throat> shows that this item's been added to my cart also goes and updates my count of my cart as well All right so that's a very similar behavior to, to the legacy view if I came in here and added this item to the cart you'll see it hides that pops up that window updates my count very uh, uh, you know kind of same exact kind of experience also, you'll note that I go into, um, once the item is in my cart, if I go to edit it, because it's a legacy view, it's going to pop it back up into this kind of legacy view UI um, and, and kind of pass in that cart as well. Gives me my update cart kind of options, which I could come in here. Maybe I want to add an attachment to this. And then update cart, which kind of saves that. And then if I were to come back into it, Right, we'd see that that cart item <clears throat> has that attachment that we just added. And if I had for inputs or variables, those would show up here as well as options. Right, similar behavior to the non-legacy view items in terms of making edits, right, where you can go in and make those edits, update carts, etc. Now, um, the other thing, so just to kind of go back to, so I kind of clicked on this from the suggestions area right, to launch this. Uh, I could also hide the suggestions, kind of browse into my uh, hardware, look at things like my 
uh, tablets, right? If I click here, it's going to do the same behavior. Uh, the other thing is if I see my item over here in the recently ordered area, right, I launch that, you'll see it pops it up in the same legacy view there as well. Uh, same recently viewed, pops it up there. So there's some. So one thing I want to call out too, so you'll see in this, as I noted before, there's this uh, passing to a new kind of a UI page here, this EVG Legacy SC. Um, what I want to highlight with this is that um, this is actually <clears throat> not part of our application install, but rather it's part of the exist or additional update sets that we send with our application install. Uh, and this one is we did load this or put this into uh, the what's called our global utility. Uh, so this is one that we expect you, you need to load in order for our, our portal to function. So these bits, these components should be there with your install. So this, we've kind of widened the list of items that are in here. Uh, in the past, we had just kind of the, uh, uh, the Git help utility script. We had some uh, UI macro and kind of this catalog site. We're now also including some of these filters we reference. Um, and really the, the bits for the legacy view, there's the UI page here. There's a style sheet for styling that to make it look like it uh, <clears throat> kind of resembles the same experience as through the portal. And then there's a UI script for handling the add to cart, update cart, submit kind of behavior um, and activities. And this is one area that with updates or upgrades, we'll have to make sure this continues to work and function because this is kind of using a lot of the legacy interactions with the cart versus um, kind of the new way. So that's kind of the classic view. Um, uh, just, you know, again, to provide some uh, backwards compatibility to catalog items that aren't yet uh, kind of set up to or to run in the service portal completely or, you know, want to kind of stage them and uh, use them later. So this gives a kind of way to kind of provide a way to use the service portal and still render these items uh, and use them for, for add to cart submission of order and getting to a request uh, kind of basis. Hope this was helpful and thank you for the time.